In our previous presentation, we understood how to find the time complexity of single loops, where in the update expression, we multiply the variable by a constant. Now in this presentation, we will understand how to find the time complexity of single loops, where in the update expression this time, we divide the variable by a constant. So let's get started and let's see the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is single loop dividing the update expression. We will learn through an example how to find the time complexity of the single loop where in the update expression we divide the variable by a constant. Then after this, I will give the homework of this lecture. Your job is to solve the problems given in the homework. So these are the topics. Let's start with the first one, single loop dividing the update expression. This is the example loop. And our job is to determine the time complexity of this loop. In this loop, we can observe i is initialized to n and the condition is i greater than or equal to 1. And the update expression is i equal to i divide by 5. This time we do not have the multiplication symbol here. We have division symbol. So this time we need to divide i by 5. And in this for loop, we have this statement. Printf Neso Academy. Our job is to determine the time complexity of this loop, and we already learned from our previous presentations how to find the time complexity. Time complexity of a loop is same as the frequency count of the innermost instruction of the loop. The innermost instruction of this loop is Printf Neso Academy. We need to determine the frequency count of this instruction. The frequency count of this instruction is same as the number of times this instruction will execute. So let's find out how many times this instruction will execute. This will give us the time complexity of this loop. In order to calculate the frequency count of this instruction, we need to analyze each iteration of this loop and in each iteration we need to observe the value of i. This will give us some pattern and according to that pattern we can determine how many times this instruction will execute. So let's do this now. In the first iteration, we can observe the value of i is n. So i is n in the first iteration. In the second iteration, the value of i becomes n by 5 because the update expression is i equal to i divide by 5. The old value of i is n and n divided by 5 is the new value of i. Therefore, in the second iteration, we will get n by 5. In the third iteration, we will get n by 5 square because we again need to divide i by 5. By dividing i by 5, this means by dividing n by 5 by 5, we will get n by 5 square. What do we get in the fourth iteration? In the fourth iteration, we will get n by 5 to the power 3. We can observe the pattern here. The initial value of i is n by 5 power 0 or we can say n. The second value of i is n by 5. Then we have n by 5 square, n by 5 cube. This will continue up to let's say n by 5 power k. This is the last value of i for which this condition is satisfied. So I am assuming that n by 5 power k is equal to 1. After this, n by 5 power k becomes less than 1. So, n by 5 power k is equal to 1. This is my assumption. Now, what do you think how many times this loop will run? If we observe this pattern carefully, in the first iteration, we have n by 5 power 0. This means in the first iteration, we have 0 in the power of 5. In the second iteration, we have 1 in the power of 5. In the third iteration, we have 2 in the power of 5. In the fourth iteration, we have 3 in the power of 5. So what do you think? What is the iteration number for n by 5 power k? The iteration number is k plus 1. So at k plus 1th iteration, the value of i is n by 5 power k. We can observe in the fourth iteration, we have 3 in the power of 5. 
in the third iteration we have 2 in the power of 5 therefore in the k plus 1 iteration we will have k in the power of 5 so the value of i in the k plus 1 -th iteration is n by 5 power k and this clearly means that this loop will run k plus 1 times or in other words we can say this statement will run k plus 1 times now our job is to determine the value of k we need to represent k in terms of n which represents the size of the input and this is important because time complexity is always represented in terms of the size of the input the size of the input is n therefore we need to represent k in terms of n let's do this we know n by 5 power k is equal to 1 so now let's solve this equation n by 5 power k equal to 1 this can be rewritten as 5 power k equal to n why we can multiply both sides by 5 power k we'll get n here and 5 power k here and therefore we can say 5 power k is equal to n now we can easily solve this equation we learned how to solve this equation by taking log on both sides in our previous lecture we will take log base 5 on both sides and i told you the reason behind this in the previous lecture let's take log base 5 on both sides after taking log base 5 on both sides we will get log 5 power k base 5 in the left hand side of the equation and log n base 5 in the right hand side of the equation we know one property of logarithm log a power b base c is equal to b multiplied to log a base c similarly log 5 power k base 5 is equal to k times log 5 base 5 so we will get k times log 5 base 5 and log 5 base 5 is 1 because this is also one property of logarithm log a base a is always 1 so log 5 base 5 is also 1 so we will get k times 1 which is equal to k so in the left hand side we are getting k and in the right hand side we have log n base 5 so this equation is equal to k equal to log n base 5 so k is log n base 5 and we know this statement will run k plus 1 times so in other words we can say this statement will run log n base 5 plus 1 times we have replaced k by log n base 5 and that's why we are getting log n base 5 plus 1 here this is equal to theta of log n this time complexity is same as the time complexity of the single loop where in the update expression we multiply the variable by a constant so i hope this concept is clear and one thing to note here is that the constant is 5 in the update expression and that's why the base of logarithm is also 5 if we have 10 here we will get 10 as the base of logarithm so whatever the constant we have here we will get in the base of logarithm so this is one trick you can remember so with this we understood how to find the time complexity of these type of loops now let's proceed and let's see the homework of this lecture determine the time complexity of the following loops these are the loops and your job is to determine the time complexity of these loops after finding the time complexity please post your answers in the comment section so we are done with this lecture okay friends this is it for now thank you for watching this presentation i will see you in the next one